When a material has been applied to a part, it can be edited. Double click the material you want to edit or right click it and select Edit Material. This will open up the material in the Material tab in the Project panel. The options you see here depends on the type of the specific material. We can see here that the type of this material is plastic. If we hit the Type drop down and change the type to Advanced, we will get some additional options as well. But for now, let's stick with the plastic type. To edit the color of a material, click the Diffuse color and adjust as needed. If you need the color to be a specific RAL or Pantone color, you can go to the Color tab in the Library panel and search for or browse to the color that you need. When you have found it, drag it to the material in the real-time view or to the Diffuse color in the Material tab. If we drag the color to the metallic paint, it makes the material look a bit strange. If we right-click the metallic paint material and select Edit Material, we can see that it's because the metallic paint has two color inputs, base color and metal color. If we try and drag the color to both inputs and make the metal color slightly brighter, it looks better. But for now, let's reword this to the original metallic paint gray. Let's center and fit the plug. Besides the diffuse or color of the material, you can edit the specularity. It controls the color and intensity of a material's reflections. For a plastic material, it should be a grayscale value, and if you set the specularity to black, there will be no reflections at all. Setting it to white will give the highest intensity. The roughness parameter controls whether reflections will appear shiny or matte. A value of 0 will give perfect shine reflections, and a value of 1 will give fully matte or rough reflections. Instead of controlling the parameters using solid colors or numbers, you can use maps, also called textures, for a more advanced look. You can use both bitmap images like JPEG and PNG images, and you can use procedural textures that are customizable textures that you can edit in real time. In comparison to traditional texture mapping, procedural textures wrap around your model without leaving seams or stretching, regardless of the model's shape, and you are not limited by any image resolution. To add a bitmap texture to the material, go to the Texture tab in the Material tab. Then navigate to the Texture tab in the Library panel and browse to a texture you would like to use. I select the Light Oak in the Wood folder. I left-click it and drag it to the Diffuse channel of the material. Once a texture has been applied, you can change the mapping type, whether it should center on the specific part or the entire model, and you can move and rotate the texture by clicking the Move Texture button and you can adjust the size using the sliders. The specific settings you'll have to use here depends highly on the image texture that you are using and the look that you are trying to achieve. You can see here in the Texture tab that we also have a channel called Bump. This takes the grayscale value of a texture and translates it into tiny surface details by making the impression of raising the brighter values. Left-click the Light Oak bitmap texture in the Diffuse channel and drag it to the Bump channel. The material now looks like painted wood. Go down to the bump height slider to adjust how prominent the effect should be. The same bitmap texture can be used in more than one channel. Hold down Alt, left click and drag the oak texture to the diffuse channel. Now the material both have the color and small surface details like oak. To remove a texture from a channel, select it and hit the trash can. To add a procedural texture as the diffuse color, select the diffuse channel and hit the procedural textures drop down. Pick the one called Spots. This is a procedural that will generate a spotted map in real time based on the parameters below. You can adjust things like radius, density, distortion, etc. to your likings or the specific look that you are trying to achieve. As with the bitmap texture, the procedural textures can be moved between channels by left clicking and dragging and be copied by holding down ALT and left click and drag. A procedural texture that is often used to create generic surface details in fabricated materials like plastic is the one called Noise Texture. Select the bump channel of the material. Hit the procedural textures drop down and select the Noise Texture type. Adjust the scale and bump height accordingly and we now have a more detailed rough looking plastic. The procedural noise texture is also useful for breaking up shiny materials on larger parts. 
Double click the red metallic paint to edit it. Go to textures, select the bump channel. Click the drop down and select the noise texture. Increase scale to 10 cm and decrease bump height to something around 0.03. If we rotate the camera slowly, you will see that the reflections due to this bump map will break very subtly and add an extra hint of realism to this material. With this introduction on how to edit the most common material parameters, let's move on and see how to apply 2D graphics to the model. For more Keyshot learning content, click on one of the playlists below. To make sure you don't miss out on any new content, subscribe to our channel by clicking the Keyshot icon in the center of the screen.